more college students are reporting that they feel stressed, that they feel depressed, that they feel overwhelmed than ever before. The numbers were already going up dramatically before COVID hit. The pandemic only made things worse for so many students. Hi, everybody, and welcome to How to College, the podcast where we get together to have real conversations about what it's like to be a first-gen college student and what that means before, during, and after college. If you're a new listener, our goal here is to democratize some knowledge that we've gained along the way, to learn from others, and to share what we learn to hopefully make your first-gen college experience much better. My name is Sandra Fernandez, and I'm one of the podcast co-hosts, and I'm a first-generation college student too. Today, we're going to be discussing self-care, the importance of taking care of yourself as you go through your college years, and maybe even as the parent of a first-gen college student, on some tips and tricks that you need to know, what you need to look for, and why it's so important. My guest today is Sandra Martinez, who is a certified neuro-linguistic programming coach. And I'm going to let her tell you a little bit more about what that means and all that she can bring to this topic. But first, join me in welcoming Sandra. Hello, Sandra. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Sandra. I'm happy to be here. First, neuro-linguistic programming. What does that mean? And what do you do? What do you do with that? Okay, so NLP, neuro-linguistic programming, is a specialized branch of cognitive psychology. And basically what that means is it studies how our brain works. And so my certification was a series of courses and it relates to how we process information, how we can use that to our benefit. And so that's the cognitive piece of it is analyzing those strategies and so that we can repeat them and apply them to other areas of our lives. And so we look at if we can do one thing successfully, then we how do we repeat that to, to apply it to other areas? And so, for example, if someone is a great athlete, how they use those strategies to be successful in athletics, how can they apply those to, to school, for example, right? And so that that happens sometimes. I'm first gen as well. And we see that a lot too of like, in school, we there there are certain criteria that you have to be an athlete, right? And so there's extracurriculars. And how do you apply that to your study? Because a lot of times it's not as fun, right? Yeah, I can absolutely imagine. And honestly, I'm not I'm not the athletic type at all. If you had said how you can apply being a computer geek, I might have understood a little bit more. Before we dive into today's topic, I want to learn a little bit more about you in your journey as a first-gen college student. Where did you go to high school? Where did you go to college? And what was your experience like? Okay, so I am born and raised in Houston, Texas. And I grew up in north side of Houston. I went to Sam Houston High School. And when I graduated high school, it was not a choice for me of necessarily attending college. So the where, that was an unknown because I didn't know how to navigate the application process. That was part of my first gen journey was I have an older sister who attended college. She started at Houston Community College and she wasn't necessarily there as, uh, not that she wasn't helpful, but she was already out of the house, right? And so I'm first gen and it was sort of like figuring out the process on my own and sort of being there for my parents at the time. And so I had the support from my parents in the sense of, Miha, this is something you have to do. Education is important. And the how, we just kind of stumbled through and had to figure that out, right? And so I started, after graduation from high school, I went to Houston Community College. I started at HCC. And it was a lot of that, of fumbling through the process and and not knowing where to go, not knowing the financial aid process, not knowing, okay, well, what documents do I need to bring? Like what, even what office do I go to? Like something as simple as that, like what, well, where do I start? And so I went to HCC. I transferred from HCC to the University of St. Thomas, and that's where I got my bachelor's in communications with a concentration in marketing. And that's where I think really I had the knowledge already from navigating the HCC process. I was able to do that. And then in at St. Thomas is where I really got into the education atmosphere. So I did my internship at a small PR firm. And at the time, the owner, she did the PR for the Houston Hispanic Forum. And they did the Career and Education Day every single year. She was dear friends with the founder of the organization. 
And that just like rocket boosted me into the education atmosphere. Like I loved every bit of it. I loved helping students just going through the process of like teaching them and like offering that the, of which I didn't have that guidance, that the, just the support, like that you're not alone and there are a lot of pieces to it. But you're not alone and it doesn't have to be a scary thing. So that's just a little bit about where I had to navigate. And I think back now, just as a professional, as an adult, I think back now and I'm like, I started and I tell a lot of people this, I started at HCC. I didn't even know that there was any other option of like colleges. And so we have here like in, in Houston area. Lone Star College and we have HCC. Like in my mind, I was like, oh, well, I have to go to HCC because that's where I'm zoned to. Like just because of the high school mentality of like, well, this is the school you're zoned to that it just it wasn't in my realm of awareness. And like, I think back to that now and I'm like, I can mean that. But it wasn't something that I knew. And that's OK. It's OK to not know. But your school, they didn't give you any counseling. Nobody gave you any advising. They didn't give you any direction. I had to think back and I had really great teachers and I had really great counselors, but I wasn't, I don't know that the level of engagement was the same as it is nowadays. Like now everywhere I look, there's a career college, there's a counselor's center, there's a, there's resources and tools. It's like, it's so, so much more prevalent and just in your face. And at the time, it just it wasn't. I mean, maybe it was me. I wasn't like a rock star, a top of my class either. Um, but I wasn't failing. I was a good student, but it just wasn't there. I don't know. This is actually something that I've heard from several of the people that have been interviewed on the podcast as first gen college students. If you've gone as a first gen student, you didn't know the system. And for many of us, we didn't really get a lot of pre-college advising to help us through. We had to muddle through it. And then we took our siblings by the hand or trying to help the next generation coming up into the system. So it's interesting that I'm hearing this over and over because it's a common trend. It's a common topic for us that we all went through it. It is interesting. And I think it it fuels that that passion and the, like the motivation is there to to pass that knowledge along because why have people struggle it's because i didn't know some i'm not gonna like okay well i'm past that that stage in my life like that's not how we grow as a society as a culture and so passing along that knowledge is really important to me being a college student is hard and not just being a first-gen college student but being a college student period is hard I worked my way through college. I understand. I'm not so far removed that I don't remember what it was like. It was hard to be a college student. But for today's episode, I did some research because I'm thought, well, maybe things have gotten better and I'm just not just not realizing it. And no, according to some articles that I read and from like from psychology magazines and other places and mental health organizations, more colleges are reporting that they feel stressed, that they feel depressed, that they feel overwhelmed than ever before. The numbers were already going up dramatically before COVID hit. The pandemic only made things worse for so many students with all of the stress of the pandemic, but also how it made the entire process of getting their education so difficult for so many of them. So many students are report feeling overwhelmed, exhausted, struggling with loneliness and isolation. The pandemic is mostly gone and we're back to normal, quote unquote, but the students are actually are not back to normal. And so that's one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about the importance of self-care and all of the stressors that college students are under because it is an important topic. It's something that we often overlook. It is. And it's, it is really important. And I don't think many people realize how many the years that have gone by, right? It's easy to forget that we were on lockdown and that a whole lot didn't happen while we were in lockdown. My kids were virtual schooling. I was working from home. They became, I became a slash kindergarten teacher. My son's entire kindergarten year was virtual. And so just thinking about how fundamental a kindergarten year is for social skills, for just child development in that early stage, then we can't forget that. And that goes towards the older kids, too, of college students, high school students graduated high school and it, and had to start virtual schooling. Or if they did go to college, if they started classes, 
they started online. We have students who graduated high school who started only online college. And it is not the same experience. It Yes, there are online classes, but it became, it wasn't a for convenience in quotes. It wasn't a for convenience option, right? We, you were forced into that of like, oh, well, my classes are online now. It's like, like it or not, that's where your classes were. And so I think that it's important to remember that and remember that there is that getting out of that transition. We have to transition out of that and how do we do that? It's like we have to teach. We have to teach how to do that. And so for students, it's really those like the prep prep college classes that that are usually, again, in person, it's like the first year, first year college classes that they have. It's like teaching time management, teaching just the culture of going to college. It's like the how to college course while you're in college. And so but if you don't get that when you're actually in college, then what help does it do, right? It's like you're taking this class of like how it's supposed to be, but then you're taking it online and it's not really, it doesn't, it's not really translate. So, so it is important to remember that, that, yeah, there was a whole lot that happened even before, even like you said, even before COVID, that those feelings of, of stress were already there. And as a, not as a student on the student side, it's remembering like you're not alone. There. There is there is help out there that if you're feeling stressed, if like, what is it that's stressing? What is it that that you're thinking about? Is it something that you is that even in your control? Is that are you worried about something that that maybe is like, is it your parents stress stressing you out? And so so we can talk a little bit more about that in, in terms of self-care piece. And then on the parent side, it's like there's resources, there's tools that that we can help you with, that we can, there, there's nonprofits, community organizations. There's all kinds of things out in the community now that that can help with that. And so depending on what the stressors are, and yeah, there's always going to be like the financial life happens and it is hard. And so we've got to remember that students are people. Students are human beings that have lives, that, that have things that happen to them in life. And just like employees, I work in HR, you've got to remember that and that people have lives. So Let's start with stress. A little bit of stress, a lot of stress. What is the impact of stress? Long-term stress, long-term impact of stress on people, college students, adults, kids, whatever. Stress can, in simple terms, throw your system completely off. It it can, long-term, and if you're constantly under stress and your body does not recharge or does not rest from all of those high levels of the chemicals that are released when you're under stress, it is damaging your system. It's damaging your organs. It's It stresses you out even more. It debilitates you. So it's long-term it can be really damaging and that's just putting it very simple because there's a whole lot that goes on in your body that that makes those things happen so for those of you listening that means headaches for some people it they might develop allergy for college students acne is one of the possibilities muscle tension risk of cardiovascular disease hypertension autoimmune diseases etc 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 so this stuff it starts out as just something small, but it will have permanent and long lasting effects. So stress is not a small thing or not a small thing when you're talking about high levels of stress constantly, constantly, which is what a lot of college students are under. So it is important that self-care be a part of what you're doing. Let's talk about self-care. When we say self-care, what is it that we're talking? About? Okay, I'm glad you asked that the way you did, because I think it's so important that a real distinction be made of like, it's everywhere now, it's become more mainstream of self-care, and meditating and journaling and all of these things. And it's not, it doesn't necessarily mean we're not saying you have to meditate to, to be healthy. We're not saying you have to go and you don't have to take luxurious trips and be at the spa. It's like, that's not necessarily what we're talking about, but taking care of like your well being, taking care of your mental well being, your emotional well being, your yes, physical well being, because exercise will help you to level out those chemicals and get different things flowing through your body. And so, yes, exercise is important, but self care in the sense of like, are you prioritizing your time? As a student, think of it that way of like, what is it that's stressing you out? And it's like, okay, well, there's a lot of work. There's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to be a student. There's papers, there's homework, there's part-time jobs at times, there's relationships, there's all kinds of things that come into play. And so how are you 
what are you putting the focus on? Are you really stressed out and hurt from a relationship and that your studies are like off to the side? Or is it the studies that are stressing you out? Like how can we, how can you find help? And so, so one is really prioritizing your time. Prioritize the, what you're putting your time towards and what you're focusing on. Prioritize your schedule, right? And so if you, if something is not working in terms of your schedule of like you took on too many classes, right? And so self-care doesn't necessarily have to be something, just some theoretical thing that coming in from in the sky of like, oh, self-care. But think of it in a very practical way of like, how can I reduce some of these stressors? And yes, meditating and journaling will help and all of those things that that you see now more, you see them on the social feed, social media feeds and all of that. But it's not just inspirational. It's not just inspirational fluff. It's really taking care of your mental health, emotional health. One of the ways for in terms of emotional self-care is it sounds simple. It really does. So don't laugh. But it's just feeling. It's like feel your feelings. And, and some people don't do that. Some people don't do that enough. And so so if there is something that, that is making you sad, is there something that, that makes you angry? Yes, we all get angry. We all get frustrated about how you handle that. And it's like if you're just stuffing your feelings, that, that is not self-care. I mean, we can talk about what is self-care, but stuffing your feelings is not self-care. And so so all of those things, if you think about it of like just this like a, a combination of all of these, then you get a whole a better view of like, OK, well, if I take care, if I'm feeling my feelings, I take care of my emotional well-being, I exercise, I take care of this, I'm prioritizing my time. You don't have to do them all at once. It's not like it, don't let self-care stress you out either. It's not that's not going to help you either. But I have to be perfect at it. Right, right. But I have to do I have to be the best. I have to do the best self-care. It's like, oh, gosh, that's even more stress. So some of the stuff I've heard you say right now, it's tips on how to do self-care is on how to practice self-care is set a routine and keep it. Prioritize your time or time management. Exercise is what I'm hearing you say. Journal or meditate means take a moment, a few moments to slow down and feel your feeling or Get in touch with what you're actually feeling. Are you feeling stressed? Are you feeling angry? Are you feeling impatient or frustrated? And acknowledge that and that will help you. What about getting enough sleep? Yes, get some sleep. And you know and what? As you were saying that too, is because it relates to students and it's like it doesn't have to be doesn't have to be I mean and I, I was in school I remember it's not fun but it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be something that that makes you like oh I've got to do homework and sort of like drudge through it go to the park go to the park and read your book take a walk and listen to an audiobook or do something that will make you feel re-energized and so if it is something like that you can listen to if you have to watch videos for class or if you have to Whatever it is, find a way, find a way to make it because getting out in nature really will, it has a positive effect. So I imagine that having people in your circle of friends or in your support system that are supportive to you is actually, it's also very helpful. Yes. It's who, not only them supporting you of like, oh, if they are going to, if they're going to go with you these places or that they're going to want to hang out and do these things with you. Because you don't necessarily, for some of the things, yes, it's fun to, to hang out with friends and do homework with friends. But if it's the opposite, if it's people who are toxic and not supporting you, then that's where it's like, okay, that's a little, that that's a little more, um, it's a little more adverse, like consequences. Because it's but like it's you can have stressor. Yeah, it's, it's adding instead of taking it away. And it's like, you can do just fine, not all the time, but you could do okay without like having people to go take a walk with you, right? You can take a walk by yourself and it'll still have the same effect. But but having someone's like, gosh, you're doing this thing again. You're journaling or, oh my God, you're always looking, you're always trying to read a book or like, like just negative Nancy of always just having a, something bad to say that that gets old really quickly. And so take a look at, take a look at your friends, take a look at who is it that, that and the reasons, like who is it that's around you? And what are they saying? Because if you're on a path and you'll, if you haven't already figured this out, because high school students, college students, if you haven't already figured this out, you're on a journey and it's yours. It's your path. And so if that person or those people around you are not, they don't have your best interest at heart or they're not, they're supporting you. It's like, you don't want necessarily all the time cheerleaders of like, yeah, you can do it. I believe in you. Go jump off that cliff. 
No, but you do want people who are going to be positive, right? And so, so take a look at your circle. Take a look at who is around you and the things that are that they're saying, because those are the voices that that come back and they infiltrate. And you start to talk to yourself in a, in a negative way if that's all that's around you. What about to maybe need some help with the self-care? Self-care is not enough or they're not able to do it themselves. They need some resources. What's available to them? Do a Google search, I would say. Start there. Start. You could you can visit your college center. If your school has a college center, if you're in high school, if you're in college, colleges have resources. Colleges have student centers. Colleges have advisors. Advisors are not just there to help you pick a class. Like they're there. And they can point you towards resources. So if it is something that that you're like, I don't even know where to start. Like, okay, this is all sounds good, but I don't know where to start. Start with your college. Start with your school. Wherever you're in school at, that's where you can start. Start with, if you're in high school, start with your counselors. I'm like, hey, where can I get some resources? Look up local organizations. Look up professional organizations that are geared towards like helping students that are in the education realm. Look for wellness organizations. There, there are organizations that have access to wellness resources. There are not, and, not, and let me say this, it's not only wellness resources. If it's like, if there's something, if one of those stressors is something very serious, like financial help, or food scarcity, or rent assistance, or like those are real life stressors. And so if one of those stressors is that, there are resources out there for that too. And so so that's what I mean by like taking a look at the stressors and like finding ways that that it's like, okay, well, how could I minimize this, right? And it's not that you have to do it or you have to go out and get another job. It's like there's resources out there. There's organizations that can help. And just start with that. I would say start with your school. And if you're in college, start with your student center, with your advisors. Go to, if there's even student centers that are like, there's a women's center. I know like Lone Star, we have a, a women's center. There are resources there for for mothers, for women who are breastfeeding, for just, there's so much. There's a career closets. There's, there, there's a food pantry. There's all kinds of things that there, there's stuff out there. What it, so let's shift a little bit to parent right now. I mean, we talked about all the self-care tips for the students. What would you say for parents? What would be different for the parent? From the parent perspective, I think there's an understanding that th that kind of needs to take place. It's like to the parents, anybody, any parents listening, it's okay to not know. It's like there's almost like permission. If that's the only word that can come to mind right now, it's like, it's like, it's okay. It's okay to not have all the answers. It's okay to want better for your kids, but not necessarily know how. Like, my parents did not go to high school. My my dad had like a grade school education. My mom finished up to like middle school. And so it's okay as a parent to to not know. It's like to know, like, I want my kids to do better than me. I want better for my kids. I want my kids to go to college. But man, I don't know how. That's okay. That's okay. You don't have to have all the answers, but love your kids. It's like that goes such a long way. Just be there. Just support them. And that not adding that stress, not adding the stress of like, well, I don't know how you're going to go or I don't know how like, no, we can't pay for it or I don't know. So I don't know how you're going to go to college. Like you need to get another job or to get two, three jobs. And it's like there's there are other ways there. That is straight up like just message to the parents. There are other ways. There are other ways for students these days to and obviously i guess now in hindsight there were other ways back then too right <laughs> but but there are other ways now for students to go to college that doesn't add stress to their life that they can find the resources out there and so don't add stress to your life in thinking all of those things of like there there are there are resources out there for parents too the just the same way that there are for students to to get parents the information that they need to be that support system because that's really all that they need. Parents, it's okay to not have all the answers. And it, and again, don't be one of like those stressors to to add on, to pile on of like, oh no, you've got to go do this. Or even, even like thinking, no, you don't have to do that. Like, or no. And this needs to be said too. It's not necessarily just college, right? It, that means like trades, trade, skilled trades. That means if there's a if there's a young college student out there or there's a high school student out there that they start their own business. It's like su support your kids in, in in finding their passion, right? So sometimes as parents, there's that oh, but you've got to go do this or oh, you need to be this. And it, yes, we know. 
like I'm split here because I'm a parent and a, and a kid. But yes, we know you love us. And but parents sometimes ha- just have to take that step back. So if you could do one or two big tips for kid for a, the first gen college students to walk away with, what would you say for students? Yes, find what you love. That's really important. And and if it doesn't work out, it's okay too. Try again. It's okay to to and even in the self care realm, it's like, oh, I'm gonna start doing this. I yeah, I'm oh, I'm gonna start journaling. And then like you do it a day or two and fall off, and it's like, oh, I sucked at that. That's not my thing. Okay, I'm done. Like you're not done with self care. No, you're not done taking care of yourself. You're not done taking care of your health and your well being and your emotional well being. It's like try again. It's okay to fail. It, it's not gonna be like. All of a sudden, I'm this great author that I'm going to just write daily and nonstop. But it's the intention. It's the intention that's there. And so if you really want to be better and get better, it's like keep trying. It's like we all fail at something. So keep trying. Well, thank you so very much for joining us today, Sandra. We hope to have you on the show again sometime in the future. For everyone, make sure and subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already. And have a great week. Thank you, Sandra.